regulation, that bill in agreement uh, to the comfort level uh, at the end of the day of council who would approve such an agreement. Um, the tax amendment that doesn't list a maximum density, nor does it list a percentage of housing units that could be multifamily. Uh, does anything effectively prevent an applicant from requesting, let's say, six units or more per acre, or requesting 50% uh, of the units be multifamily? Uh, what, what options are available to the town to, if they don't want to have that and go in that direction, what options are available to the town to prevent that? I know we've got to negotiate, but supposing the applicant uh, is so fast insisting that uh, we have 50% multifamily and uh, we have X percent density beyond what uh, the town thinks is reasonable. Is that? I mean, if we don't agree, we don't agree. There's no development agreement. Okay. And are we, are we able to uh, stand withstand a court challenge if that well, the court challenge will come I'm sure if we were not to agree so the, the town is prepared what's likely the town prevailing if that were to go to a, 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 high, a higher level of decision this is a, the lawyer's answer is it depends on the reasonableness <laughs> or unreasonableness of the party <laughs> working my entire career with lawyers you haven't disappointed me <laughs> and I understand Okay, I have uh, just one final area that I want to address. Um, on page 17 of the packet, at Article 49D states that duplex, triplex, and quadruplex housing units are not included in definition of apartments. But it further states that each of these types of housing units or structures count as one unit um, for density purposes. That's entirely consistent with our Article uh, 4B5B6. Hope you can follow that. Um, but uh, Article 4B5D4 limits these units, types of units, to 10% of the total units of housing in the subdivision. Is it inappropriate for us to ask that this text amendment be modified to put an upper bound on the number of those units that can be counted as single units, single housing units. And I don't, I think 10% uh, is not an unreasonable figure. It's reasonable to ask. <clears throat> All right. Any further questions or comments from the board? Yes. Um, I have a question about the vesting issue. Uh, I believe that's um, page 19, the bottom of page 19, number six. Uh, if I could get Scott or Brad to speak to this, or even the town attorney about vesting rights um, for future uh, development under the OSMV uh, zoning. Is it standard for It's something? standard. Is it standard for something like this to last for seven years? That's in the general statute. Okay, that's what I, I want to read. I just want to make sure. Um, and there's, there's bound to be some sort of a tangible benefit from the way I'm reading it. It looks like that the developer is going to be able to usurp that vesting from the town and benefit, skew things in his way a little bit um, because of the way this is worded, um, talking about the rights. I, I realize the rights, it says the vesting rights are necessary to protect the design integrity of the approved development from future regulations adopted for general application throughout the town. So it sounds like if we give this part of the text amendment to the developer, he's going to be exempt from any future regulations town might impose but what I'm I guess what I'm driving at if if he is uh, true to his word and he develops his properties like he intends to and says he intends to uh, I don't see why this would be necessary okay in, in every rezoning that we do once the rezoning is issued um, 
and approved by the town, the, the person requesting that rezoning is vested in certain rights. And those rights uh, don't change when you uh, uh, change uh, your ordinance another way. They're, they're guaranteed, and they're guaranteed for life, I guess, right? Until they change. This language in that paragraph, Ms. Collier, is lifted from the statute. Verbatim. From the statute. From the statute. Okay. And whether we like it or not, That's the, way it is. the legislature has spoken on the issue of vested rights for, for phase developments. Yeah. I was just concerned about the part that it said that the development, the, the development we, which we could say the developer, would be protected from. So I know about grandfather. Sounds like a grandfather clause type of thing. Am I correct? Yeah. Okay. That's all I need. Thank you. I mean, it's it's actually a little different than uh, the a developer entering into a contract under this type of text amendment. He's bound by that agreement with the town unless the town agrees to change it. Sure. So, okay. Being no further questions, is there uh, a motion to uh, do something? I move that case TA032023 will be recommended to council for approval as proposed by the applicant. The request is consistent with the town's adopted comprehensive plan because of appropriate housing and residential development and is reasonable and in the public interest because it will be in harmony with the area in which it is to be located and with the general plans for the land use and development of the town of Summerfield and its environs. Ms. Reed, would you consider a friendly amendment? Depends on what it is. Thank you. <laughs> Let me say it first. Would you consider a friendly amendment to limit the uh, number of um, duplex, quadplexes, and um, triplexes that count as single housing unit to 10% of the total housing units? No. I actually think that that comes up in the rezoning process and should not be a part of the text amendment. A problem that happens in the rezoning process that doesn't necessarily have any teeth. Yes. Yes. The rezoning process, <laughs> the rezoning process <laughs> is the teeth. Yeah, can our attorneys speak? The rezoning process is the teeth if it's based on an ordinance. In this case, it's not based on an ordinance. We're going to have, I have two points to make. One is before we have discussion, there ought to be a second to the motion. Um, well, I, I want to make a friendly amendment for it, which is the proper way to do it. The movement has declined your friendly amendment. And I'll second that's what we need. And the okay. second point I want to make is these details will be part of a development agreement. And I, I, I know that that sounds and maybe unpopular among some people, but the way the process works is we adopt the text amendment, and what the text amendment then requires is for somebody, whether it be David Couch or somebody else, to apply to rezone the property to the district and to develop and negotiate a development agreement, which will have more of the details about percentages of housing and the like. That, that will all be part, of, it should all be part of the development agreement. And that development agreement is enforceable by law. It, it's like a zoning, it's like a zoning ordinance, yes. Okay, there's a, a motion a second um, before the, the, the board. Is there further discussion? I don't know. What was, what was, I'm sorry, Ben, what did you say? I said there's a motion before the board, and it's been seconded. Are there further comments or questions? members of this board. I do have a comment. Uh, it has not been discussed tonight, but I'm sure all of us here are fully aware, everybody in this building is aware. I have great concerns about water and sewer uh, coming to Summerfield. We do not have the infrastructure for it. And I've heard a civil, a civil engineer stand up here and talk. I've heard other soil evaluation people talk. Where is that money going to come from? And uh, these are people that hold master's degrees and 
other degrees in those specific um, areas, and I have great concerns of the millions and millions of dollars that it's going to take, and also the fact that we're, our town's going to be torn up for 20 years. Um, and I've had a lot of calls and emails and concerns from citizens about that issue. So uh, I don't know if this could be discussed tonight, but I'll offer another discussion. But there's been no talk about that whatsoever. And I'm simply voicing some of the concerns that some of the citizens have uh, contacted me on. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Yes. Um, there being no further discussion, I'm going to call the roll. Mr. Carter, yes or no? No. Ms. Moon? Yes. Ms. Um, Whitaker? Yes. 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 And I vote yes as well. I, I've said on two previous occasions uh, that I favor the text amendment, but that uh, there were certain things I didn't like about it. Uh, there are still certain things I don't like about it. But the bottom line is when you have a, uh, when you have what we have, uh, I'm not willing to take my chance with the legislature. I spent my entire career working in regulatory, almost 40 years, and I know from experience when the, the tracks or something is greased, and mark my word, the tracks are greased. You might be successful in stopping it, but then again, are you willing to take that chance? So with that, yes. 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 With that yes. 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 Yes.